There's a parable I want to recite, which I feel is quite relevant to this moment. So there's a young boy who decides one day that he wants to study judo, despite the fact that he's lost his left arm in a really terrible car accident. So this boy begins lessons with an old Japanese judo master. And the boy's doing well, so he can't understand why, after several months of training, the master has only taught him one move. So he asks, Sensei, shouldn't I be learning a lot more moves than this? And the sensei says, This is the only move you know, but this is the only move you'll ever need to know. So the boy is kind of confused and he doesn't understand, but he believes in his teacher. So the boy keeps training. Several months later, the sensei takes the boy to his first tournament. And surprisingly to himself, the boy easily wins his first few matches. The third match proves to be a little bit more difficult, but again, his opponent, becoming impatient, ends up being taken down quite easily by the boy. So he ends up winning again. So now he's in the finals. And the final match is the toughest one. His opponent is a lot bigger and a lot stronger and far more experienced. And so for a bit of time, he, he appears to be quite outmatched. And the referee is actually quite concerned as well, so he calls a timeout. But the sensei says, no, 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 let him keep fighting. So the match resumes. And his opponent makes a critical mistake and drops his guard. And in that moment, the boy uses his one move to pin him and wins the match and the tournament as well. So on the way home, the boy and the sensei, they review all of the matches and, and obviously his one move as well. And the boy then asks, how did I win the tournament with only one move? And the sensei answers, well, you won for two reasons. First, you've almost mastered one of the most difficult throws in all of judo. And second, the only known defense for that move is for your opponent to grab your left arm. So this is very relevant. It's important to understand what's being said in this parable, in this story. It really is about weaknesses or perceived weaknesses. And that's what this system is all about. It's about targeting weakness, or at least what we conceptualize as our weaknesses. But oftentimes these aren't weaknesses at all. It's just a story that we've told ourselves. And we're not looking at our greatest strength, what we have inside of us. We're not paying attention to that. We're instead focusing on what the system has told us is our great weakness that we have and it's not a weakness at all it's in fact a great advantage a great advantage over this whole wrong vision that keeps inflicting its force of will upon it upon every last one of us so instead one needs to shift their perception their perspective if you will yeah the angle of their own vision and see that what we have conceptualized as weakness is in fact a great advantage. A tremendous one. But this place, the wrong vision, does not want us to know that. It does not want us to see that. And so this is why it's important to go into this and why this particular parable and story is very relevant and very important at this time. And I wanted to read that out for that reason, so that anyone who's truly listening out there can go into it for themselves, if they so choose. Talk to you again soon.